Uh, what is the session that's next? It looks like it's EVO Minecraft MOOC. Let's see, and uh, there are a number of moderators uh, among them, Jane and myself. And um, we're going to tell you about that session now. I guess it's our turn. Uh, we're EVO Minecraft MOOC uh, at the Best of EVO. And um, we, the, uh, Jane and I will be here. There are other presenters. Actually, we were very grateful to Rose Bard, who was definitely going to be here. She pretty much made most of the slideshow. Uh, the rest of us have augmented it, but she was planning to, she was our organizer for a while, but she, she, she couldn't attend in person. Uh, Aaron and Dawn should probably be along for the tour afterwards. And in this one, the video doesn't seem to be playing, but that's okay. We've got it right here. We're going to play 17 seconds of this video. This is a great introduction by Rose. Okay, uh, now it gets promotional into the session that we have just finished, but you can see in this video, that's our spawn point. And uh, Sura, or Laura Briggs, uh, built all that. Back to the presentation. These are our moderators for, uh, for this time around. There's Aaron Schwartz, who uh, runs our server. He'll, he'll be along at 11 o'clock when we do the Minecraft MOOC tour. And Don, also known as Abu Fletcher, uh, I used to know him in Oman, actually, and that's, I guess that's why he's an Arab dress. Arab Fletcher, uh, Abu Fletcher means father of Fletcher, who is his first son. Uh, Maha Abdul Monim, who we know as uh, Olive Tree, and Jeff Kuhn, who was one of our seminal moderators, Kim Harrison, and Laura, actually we both got from uh, VSTE, uh, which is a... Uh, uh, kind of a K-12 um, group that's very into technology, Virginia Society for Technology and Education. Marianne Schmolchitz, also one of our seminal moderators, and then uh, Matty Tsai, who is one of our very esteemed moderators, and he sometimes comes along with his mom, uh, Jane. And then Rose Bard, who is also makes a moderating team. We have many uh, parent-children moderating teams. Her son, Emmanuel, also plays with us. And this is uh, me and my daughter, Bobby. No, no, sorry, that's my wife, Bobby. And then Mircea Petrascu, who is uh, uh, is an excellent blogger. You should read his blogs, uh, telling really interesting tales of uh, what he does in Minecraft and makes up interesting stories, which are actually models for what we can do with students. And Dakota Redstone, who is, uh, uh, he, we always see him by his avatar, but he's a very uh, knowledgeable and friendly and helpful kind of mentor for us. So we have a portal. If I click here, you can see it. The interesting thing that, the, that this slide points out is that we archive everything that we do. And all those, that, that was an image actually. But if you go to the Missions for Minecraft, which is EVO, uh, missionsforminecraft.pbworks.com, then you can see this uh, this introduction right here. All these things, there's a, an internet problem loading them all in, but if you leave it long enough, they all pop in. So this tells people, this is our portal page. It tells people how to get into EVO Minecraft MOOC and all this stuff is here in the sidebar. So if you go anywhere else, you, um, like if you want to go to any of the archives, for example, they're all given here. If you want to find out what we did in our very first session, um, live recordings, you can click there and you can see what we did, what we have archived from our very first session. So as you see, the sidebar stays with us, even though the live events uh, go elsewhere. Okay, so uh, we have several spaces. You just saw one, the wiki is the EVO Minecraft book wiki space. This is where we, we present our missions. Now, if you've been around EVO for a long time and you were here when Shelly Terrell did her um, ebook sessions. She she uh, inculcated in me to call anything you ask 
students to do missions. So missions are what you do to accomplish things in the course. We also have a Facebook group. Let's see if we click there, we can see it. Hello, Facebook group. Okay, so this is our Facebook group. Looks like we're talking about what we're doing in EVO uh, in, in, uh, here. And Rose Bard, by the way, posts about her Mine Academy, a Minecraft, yeah, Mine Academy, I believe. And uh, she does a lot of work in that. So if she were here, she could tell us more about that. Um, groups IO is replaced Yahoo Groups, but it's where we can communicate with each other directly for people who follow, who use emails. Discord is a, a voice chat that we uh, use while we're playing Minecraft, but it also has many affordances for setting up a community for us. Uh, you can stream into, you can stream your Minecraft stream into Discord, uh, has channels for us to talk about uh, whatever topic we need to talk about it. And also uh, it connects with the server. So whatever goes on in the server comes up in Discord and we can talk to people in the server through Discord. It's a very nice affordance there. Uh, these are some of the places that we have built over the years, in the seven years we've been doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and 2021 is number seven. If you want to visit this place from the server, we have a warp to it. So not only do we archive our uh, recordings and live sessions and things like that, but we also um, archive our builds. So uh, that's not very useful to you if you're not in the server, but just to know that you can actually go to that place where we were, I believe, in 2019. Okay, so um, for this, um, we have we have a registration page when people want when people want to express interest in our course. Uh, they fill out a Google form, and uh, it gives us a database of who has registered for the course. And these are the countries that were represented. So um, we had over 100 people register for the session. And getting them into Minecraft is a little bit more difficult. I, or, you know, well, people do come along and do it. But this time we had 16 participants, and that's not counting moderators, who joined us on EVO Minecraft MOOC server. And that's quite a lot of people, actually, because it's very difficult to, uh, to go from express an interest, come to our Zoom sessions, uh, then uh, to actually get onto the server. That's the... Uh, that's where the cheese is. So um, you're, you haven't really evaded the cat until you can get onto the server. So the fact that 16 people did that is some accomplishment. And then once we get, everybody has to come into Minecraft in order to learn from us. You can't learn just by talking about Minecraft. We have a lot of things for you to read. We've done a lot of presentations. There's lots of things you can do to warm up for, your, uh, for coming onto the server. And uh, Discord, as I mentioned, hooks up with Minecraft. Uh, this is a view of, uh, this might be one of my screenshots. I'm not really sure. Uh, yes, it is. There's my name there. Okay, so uh, I was visiting uh, Dakota Redstone on his Hollywell server. Um, Jane, am I wandering into your territory yet? Oh, I mentioned. okay. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> oh. Why don't you talk um, over, take over and talk about some of our expectations and things like that. So uh, we, 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 we would really like our participants to come in um, our server and play and explore language learning and teaching with us. Um, well, yesterday in the virtual world, virtual worlds panel, um, Jeff Kuhn has talked about um, right now being the experiential age that, you know, kids are playing in the virtual worlds, but teachers are not. And so um, we have in our session, um, you know, when it's a live presentation, like Zoom meetings, there are lots of educators coming in for the Zoom presentations, um, but not like, like we showed you, only 16 participants actually went in world um, and, um, you know, uh, explored Minecraft with us. Okay, we also provide curate, curate resources relevant to Minecraft, um, discover, share discoveries, discoveries and accomplishments with other participants. Like Don always showed us, he, he is a great photographer in, in world and in, in rea 
in the real life. Um, she, he, he, he captures wonderful um, scenes and tell stories with it. And that's how we can also use that for teaching as well. Um, create spaces in Minecraft um, where desired learning outcomes um, can be promoted and we learn to build and survive in Minecraft and expand personal learning networks by uh, befriending colleagues who can help each other continue their exploration of Minecraft as an environment for staging enhancing learning. Um, these, th this is like the details of uh, 16 participants engaged in different levels with our session, but um, we have here um, this photo, this picture, a picture here was taken by our server um, mass, a, a host, um, Aaron. Um, this documents like, this is like a leaderboards for um, the top 10 people who have logged in. And you, if you can see here, Sure has uh, spent 31 days, um, which is like 31 days times 24 hours. That's a lot of time in, in world anyways. So this is our list and um, I'm not gonna go over them, but you can see very quickly, um, six teachers, four professors, one TESOL undergraduate, two ELT consultants, two material writers, and one work with EdTech. And that's basically their backgrounds. Um, the, we started off with a kickoff um, of barbecue, having a barbecue hosted by Dakota Redstone in Minecraft. And we had fun, fun barbecuing. Um, and our kickoff event was on January 11th and a lot of people joined us. Um, there are several, you know, several, but a lot of PlayStation sessions in Minecraft hosted by Vance, Bobby, Maha, Laura, Briggs, um, and they were fun. And um, let me see. So our participants also had an opportunity to go to different servers. Uh, this one, Hollowell by Dakota, Ascraft by Maha, and uh, Visti server um, actually hosted a Minecraft Monday um, and with Dark, uh, introducing how to how the redstone works and um, there are tons of participants like uh, 15 um, and um, we live streamed it with 20, 20, uh, 22 views. Could I point out something on that slide? Yeah. Uh, this one? The, where, where you see in 2021 I think I think I'm not sure Anyway, I think that's hyperlinked. So if, if anybody in our slides are shared publicly and right there in the PB, they're in the, the uh, well, actually they're at the Learning Together Wiki, but I'll put them up when I post my record of this at learningtogether.net. The slides will all be there. I'm not sure if we okay. shared them on the, but in any event, all these all these links are hyperlinked. So you can go to okay. this. This one uh, is, yeah. Hollywell server will take you to the, uh, where Dak took us around it, Azcraft, Azcraft will mm -hmm. uh, take you to uh, mm -hmm. the video of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Next slide. Um, we had two very formal presentations, one on the topic um, of key aspects for teacher development in Minecraft um, by Rose and I. Um, and we talked about well, Rose and I, Rose helped me um, work with my graduate students. We, I had two classes of graduate students um, and I, it, it was a call technology enhanced language learning class. And um, I've introduced Minecraft and help using Minecraft education version and help them explore how they can deliver Minecraft lessons, um, Minecraft English lessons. And so we talked about that and um, uh, we have a lot of uh, participants for this session uh, and afterwards it's viewed 99 times and also the second presentation was Rose um, presenting her work with a mine academy um, and she's she's opening up at mine academy and she's having her own students um, and she's sharing how she set up mine academy and um, she's uh, working on writing a research paper on that as well. So 
This is really professional development, not only for participants, but for moderators as well. Okay, so you can see here, these are the screenshots of, this is kickoff on January 11th. This is the presentation on key aspects for teacher development in Minecraft. And this is presenting for sharing about Minecraft Academy English Club um, right here. Okay. Um, leveled up in Minecraft. So this is, this slide was, uh, uh, you know, created by Rose and quoting that um, Katrina has not only developed her Minecraft skills through uh, Evo Minecraft session, but has also decided to continue develop her skills in order to teach kids Tagalog and um, English. I'm super happy to have her as uh, mentee in uh, Mind Academy Teachers Club for Minecraft and Education and to help her develop her pedagogical Minecraft skills and become a global mentor. Okay, so um, this is Katrina right here. Okay, mission success. <laughs> okay, so. She's very enthusiastic. So there she is right there in that picture. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right here. And um, so I what we put here participants uh, testimonies uh you know like vance had mentions that um we have we are, we are like family members um participating in this uh professional development um a lot of us bring our kids in here uh, on the server because we like to explore how they learn in this virtual world and we found out that they're actually they actually have better minecraft skills than adults than teachers than we do and, um, and so Jamie um, Harrison, a professor, um, she was saying that thank you for this great EVO class. And um, she said that she, although she wasn't able, not nearly involved as she wanted, but she uh, really appreciate all the work and the relationship building that goes on into this group. And I hope to stay part of part of things, one great outcome for me has been finally figuring how to have my own account that is separate from my son's account and that I can actually try things out on my own. See, right here, a, a son that plays Minecraft better than his mom. <laughs> a special thanks to um, as well for your openness to growing our children and my son adores everything Evo. So see, the, um, I really like that. So that's why we're sharing this. Um, and lessons learned. These are, these are. Um, I think that part of this Evo Minecraft MOOC community, um, we have found that, well, not, not so many par participants are willing to join us in world in Minecraft. And um, Jeff Kuhn has mentioned about di digital literacy for educators and that in this virtual world, all because of the pandemic, the gaming industry in, in the gaming industry has grown and a lot more kids have um, spent their time in gaming. Um, but perhaps educators uh, are, you know, are not. And so um, we started because of this Minecraft MOOC session, um, I've I've, I've introduced Minecraft to my graduate students, um, 40 in-service teachers and um, 10 pre-service teachers. And, and we're learning how to build uh, English lessons in Minecraft so that we're meeting our kids in world and um, engaging them in the virtual world that they love. And these are pictures of it. And Rose is de developing her own mind academy. Um, and um, developing scavenger hunts for her students. And also uh, Laura Briggs were, was able to, uh, because you know, one of the biggest events in the US is um, NASA um, landing Mars rover onto Mars. Um, and so, um, you know, with Minecraft, you could recreate that Mars environment and have kids explore Mars and talk about Mars. And it's a virtual setting where kids can be engaged in the engage and interact and use the language um, that relates to that setting. So um, I think that we will continue to help bring educators in Minecraft and 
hopefully that they will create more lessons um, for our kids. And we will end, uh, this is, oh, perhaps, I don't know if you can hear this. Does anybody have any questions about uh, what you've seen or what we're doing? I have a question. Um, okay. For, mm -hmm. Well, this year I had hoped that I could enter, but then that didn't work out either. And I noticed that you have some beginners uh, in there. Did the beginners uh, stay in and get to a level where they actually were able to play and uh, not only play, but also um, use their skills, uh, possibly for use in the classroom with their own students? Uh, I was a beginner in 2015, and uh, I have continued for seven years now, and I'm feeling pretty good about it as far as using it with my own students. I did, actually, in uh, UAE. I used it with my students. Um, but uh, Mireya is another who, who one, I'm pretty sure she was a beginner because she was, she was asking about chopping trees and things like that when she first arrived. <clears throat> she has really thrived in the, in the world. Um, I don't know, maybe you could think of other examples. Don is a beginner when he well, finally um, had to be a moderator. I was thinking in terms of uh, being an educator, um, you know, in some ways I, I think it's, going to be challenging for teachers to stay ahead of kids. It just almost like won't happen. Uh, there's actually, there's a great South Park episode about kids playing Minecraft and the parents not knowing how to, how to do it. So they hire a kid to teach them secret lessons in, in doing in, in uh, Minecraft. But in that sense, I think that shouldn't stop a teacher from using it. And it says, you don't have to be the expert. You can let the kids do their thing in it without controlling it. I, I almost feel that's the greatest value of Minecraft rather than uh, the teacher, let's say programming a lesson to let things happen that the kids are largely controlling and the teacher is sort of there you know, the guide on the side concept. 
kids that love to explain what they're doing. Some, um, to, excuse me, Vance. Wouldn't there mm -hmm. have to be some goals uh, for a particular lesson uh, when they're working in Minecraft, you know, where uh, either during that lesson they all come together with uh, and there is a product at the end or over a period of time, you know, they work on the process, but it's scaffolded by the teacher to uh, arrive at a certain outcome. VSTE is a very good example of that. They, they have uh, every, the first Monday of every month, they have what's called Minecraft Mondays, and they always do uh, something different. For example, um, one time they took us around turtle farms that they had set up. Um, one kid built a bunch of NASA jet rockets, and we saw them in creative in uh, what is it called? The, the, the view that you can travel through things. So you can go through them and you can see the detail inside. Uh, actually, um, yeah, they, and, and they, had, they, they also put up, uh, they have uh, pixel art. They create pixel art. So it's part of your art curriculum. Uh, Redstone is a very good one that Jane just showed. Uh, Dark Knight was showing the VST people how to uh, put together redstone themselves. Redstone works kind of like electricity. It works with logic gates and with uh, repeaters and things like that. So it's, uh, it's something you can use uh, that kind of skill. You know, uh, building yeah. in Minecraft requires some architectural intuition, uh, mathematical, because it's all done by blocks. So you often have to predict, let's see if I head out this way, uh, which way do I go to reach the surface or reach the spawner I'm trying to reach or whatever? So uh, there's a lot of calculation or oh, map making. Uh, you can you can find treasure maps in Minecraft, and you can uh, uh, orient yourself on the map. Uh, we discuss it amongst ourselves. Uh, Don I, I, found I one the other day. I think to uh, to really make use of that, you really have to move away from traditional ideas of language teaching of the idea like. Today, we're going to have a lesson that does the past tense. I don't think you can effectively do those sorts of lessons uh, in Minecraft. It is more the sort of, uh, you know, ultimately it's CLIL. You know, that's, that's what Vance is just describing here. This is a content, uh, content language integrated situation. And I think for, particularly for young children, uh, this works for them. Say, let's build a rocket. And what's the language that can come out of that? Um, so maybe it's, maybe it's a case of they play in world and then out of world in the classroom, they are working on language that, you know, the teacher makes some notes and then afterwards develops those language points. That's, that's the way I see it. And another example in the VISTI uh, world, uh, they gave us all fishing rods. And we had to go out and fish. And when you caught a fish, you collected some fish. And then you had to walk back and go to a database. You had to go to a database and enter the fish that you caught and the objects that you caught. And everybody was doing that on a collected database. And this was actually, this database was actually populated by materials that the students had produced. So that kind of skills where you're gathering data and uh, analyzing it, perhaps making a product from that, <clears throat> uh, just to learn how the, the fishing works. So, uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, possibilities. You know, some, some uh, one complaint about Minecraft is you're kind of asking, well, is it in the curriculum? But the answer to that is the curriculum is in it. So it, yeah. there's always, a, it, it doesn't have to be done all the time. This is something that you can do, uh, you know, games playing, Games-based learning is quite popular because it engages people, students. Well, Vance, somewhere, one of your papers or something, some presentation, you have a quote from somebody way back that's basically people learn quickest Stevick. when they're Earl Stevick. Yeah, Earl can, you, Stevick, can, you, can yeah. you say that? Uh, the knowledge that is gained through uh, doing incident that's in incidental to something that you are doing. The, the knowledge that you gain from that is more powerful than 
learning it directly and right. uh oh i something like that yeah uh, that, that that's that's the essence yeah something like that that really playing yeah, minecraft yeah. uh it isn't like okay i'm going to teach these language points i'm going to play yeah. minecraft and the language will come in through that and, and there's evidence from that from the small chances too because i mean those are amazing kids that's how i got uh, I don't know if Mariana is here. She was in an earlier session I was in, but there she is. Hi, Mariana. Uh, Hello. You can tell us a little. You interviewed Philip, nine years old at the time, and he uh, told. In, in, we were trying to find out how did he learn so fluently uh, English. Uh, the point is that um, our oldest son, who is now seventeen. Uh, started playing Minecraft when he was at the age of eight. But the younger son was the one who found out about the game online. And uh, of course, it was fun for them. Uh, they learned by doing, but uh, he didn't know how to do certain things. And he was trying to find more information on YouTube. And uh, after that, he stumbled upon many, you know, YouTube tutorials and people were speaking English, explaining. And uh, after a certain time, they quickly pick up the language because you have to know how to craft certain things in Minecraft. You have to figure out the language. And after a year, he said, I got better and better at speaking English because he was so immersed in the game. Uh, and at the age of nine, he actually created his own video tutorials. I don't know whether that's because he was, he's such, um, he's, um, he likes to learn by doing, right? Uh, and most of us teachers, I like that. So he likes to teach his friends, his peers. Yeah, it's all in yeah, English and, because he's Croatian. Yeah. He did. He would, of course, uh, make mainly videos in in English at, at first. And um, I was impressed by him doing this uh, at this very early uh, uh, age. Uh, and his English was uh, uh, he, he actually speaks uh, better. Both of them, they speak better um, English than I do. Their accent is perfect American English, and Vance can definitely uh, witness that because he met them. Um, I have something between. It's like learned English. So uh, and, and I read at that time when they were younger that uh, you actually uh, learn the language uh, uh, at the age uh, until the age of six, seven, or eight with the both uh, hemispheres of your brain. So it was easy for them. They learned the language as they were because they were exposed to it as the native people. And now, I must say, uh, in a way, <laughs> they um, speak English in a at certain point better than Croatian, even though they, are, uh, they live in Croatia, uh, they can understand quickly and easily things in, uh, in English. Everything that they read, they like to read mainly in English. Uh, they even struggle with certain uh, materials in Croatian because they don't want to work on it. Uh, but Philip is special. He he is he can learn many foreign languages. He speaks uh, German, Spanish, uh, and he even started learning Japanese. So for him, that's something different. But all in all, uh, the game itself made him work on his language, and it just picked up. And as soon as uh, he's learned main basic. Uh, language he started to communicate as you mentioned Vance with friends first on Skype then on Discord and they would speak and playing the Minecraft and they would use English uh, speaking and communicating and it just yeah, move on and at the age of 10 he had his first online webinar for teachers about how to use Minecraft <laughs> so that's and he, he told me that when they first started watching videos in YouTube they couldn't understand a word and the more they watched, he said, language emerged. Perfectly. Eh? I think, you know, we normally think of just like watching as a passive thing. And, you know, like say, nobody would say that simply uh, sitting in front of a TV is a good language learning opportunity. But somehow watching gameplay uh, tutorials is a different sort of thing in the sense you, you sort of know what's happening in terms of the action so you can make more sense of the language. That was a good question. Yeah. Well, 
for um, yeah, big, um, you know the kids at at the very early uh, stages. Uh, I teach I I teach English. I uh, started teaching English with, with kids at seven or eight uh, years of age, and and now I teach uh, secondary students. But the pay, the more the most important thing in um, in a child when they learn a foreign language, and I noticed that with my uh, colleagues who teach German in school and so on, is that you have to make them love the, la the language. If they have um, hmm, something that it's like, uh, it, if, it is, if they find it difficult, it should be fun. As long as it's fun, no problem. Even, uh, even though, you know, at the first, this A, A, A1, A2 level uh, from in, in a European, common European framework, it's, you have to pick up as many vocabulary, as much as vocabulary if you, uh, if you, um, you get, and then it will just start uh, as you, as you if, if you do this, it will be perfect later on, even though it, it even gets uh, complicated grammar. Now, I will just get back a little bit with my younger son, who is now 15. Uh, so he didn't do as much as Philip did, but I, he was only five when he was playing a game called Plant vs. Zombies. And as, as, as I said with Philip, <laughs> he was uh, playing the game and um, he also wanted to learn something more. He was age five and didn't know how to record himself, screen share, whatever. And he took um, a, a digital camera of ours from the, somewhere from the wardrobe and just put it in front of the screen and then we would we came into the uh, room and he was pretending to be a YouTuber playing Plant vs. Zombies and explaining in a very good English but child uh, pronunciation like uh, uh, how to do this, how to buy this in com normal English. And uh, he even at the age of five, remember this is age of five, not a native speaker. He already used conditional sentences, which for uh, uh, s learners of uh, foreign language is like n not even in a mother tongue. I don't know that I would hear him as using conditional sense. So if you do this, if you do that, make sure this and hi guys uh, and so on. So uh, I, was uh, I was amazed. And I, I think we have this DVD. My husband make a DVD of what he created at the age of five. And Philip, when he recorded himself, uh, now I think he said, I'm ashamed. Oh my God, what kind of a voice? I was just a baby, but you, this is how you started. And now he's actually a professional. And uh, it took him years actually to be this great, even though in a way I'm a bit scared that uh, games can make you addicted. Uh, even though they are great at uh, English, uh, the younger son, I think he got totally addicted into. So be, make sure not them play too much. So that's the only problem here. But they do let, learn a lot, right? <laughs> let, let me clarify for uh, everyone here that we're into our second session right now. Uh, we have two sessions. Someone has started a screen share. Uh, Jane. Yeah, we, anyway, this is our second session. Uh, and uh, the second session is a Minecraft tour. And we had planned to do the Minecraft tour with a uh, uh was that was that screen share on purpose or was that just me uh, <laughs> anyway we're we're going into minecraft and we're going to show people around and we'd we plan to have a discussion just like we're doing right now and here's aaron too aaron's uh here for the tour that's our this is a we, we have an hour for the tour we can we can be here till 11 but uh we were planning to uh, to have a little discussion just like we're doing right now. So I, we can continue that discussion. And if anybody else wants to join in the discussion, you can, or if you have a question to ask, you can. <laughs> um, so um, I, I wanted to welcome um, my three students um, from Uzbekistan who I just uh, invited into this Zoom as well, who are, um, we were just discussing Minecraft and virtual worlds a little bit before um, we jumped in here. Um, also, um, I, I, I sent kind of a panicked email to my co-presenters this morning that I've had two computers die this week, and now I have no computer that plays Minecraft, <laughs> but um, but I can still uh, I, I can still host this event, and um, I, I hopefully I can pass it over to uh, to Vance and Don and Jane, who will be able to actually show us some things in game. Um, if you attended my talk yesterday, I talked a little bit about um, how the Minecraft server for EVO is set up, and um, oh, there's a chat. 
Okay. Um, it says, you can say we're going to, to share Minecraft. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so um, I am going to show you um, one of the things that I talked about a little bit yesterday, and that was a, um, a, a plugin that we added uh, to our um, uh, Minecraft server. Um, again, for those of you that don't know, um, EVO Minecraft is um, uh, connected to the Electronic Village online. Oh, it looks like Bobby's in there. Great. Um, it's, it's connected to the Electronic Village online. And um, so um, this was, this is the map of the EVO server. Again, the participants on this server are mainly English teachers or um, people like Don who are English teacher adjacent. Um, uh, also, we have um, a couple of, um, uh, a couple of younger members, a couple of, of children are, are using this server as well. Um, Jane's, uh, uh, Jane's son, uh, Maddie, is one of like the heavy users of this. Um, but it's also a world that we can go to and hang out at. And we try to keep this, uh, even though the EVO only goes for a couple of weeks in, uh, in the winter, um, we try to keep something up all year, you know, in case people want to join. And, we, and we've um, we have both the Minecraft server and the uh, Discord server where we can chat with each other. And then we also have a Facebook group. Um, so we have, we have multiple places where we, where we get in touch with each other. Um, you can see as I'm looking at this, this is, it's called DynMap. I talked about it in my presentation yesterday. And DynMap is a plugin for Minecraft that allows you to have a Google Maps-like web-based interface for your uh, Minecraft server. And so you can see all of the different biomes and all of the different worlds. And I can see where Vance is playing. If I zoom in a little bit, you know, for those of you familiar with Minecraft, then maybe this might look a little familiar. I can see here, this is like a satellite view of Vance and Bobby's house. And they're hanging out inside. And um, mm -hmm. if, if you look on the right here, I have um, different ways to view the world. So like right now I'm looking at it as like a, um, uh, a three-dimensional view, but I can also change it. So I'm looking at kind of like a bird's eye map-like view. Um, I have maps of, of the other worlds uh, that we have here. I can click on Bobby and it will go directly to where Bobby is. I can click on Vance and it'll go directly to where Vance is. It looks like Bobby must have jumped uh pretty far away from from vance so like somebody she's, could she's just collecting string in the string ah farm. she's she's at the string farm okay good mm -hmm. um which when we talk about the string farm that's something my brother built on this server that um makes it easy for um players to harvest strings which they get from spiders so it's like a place where they can fight spiders and get springs uh, that's get, cool i thought that uh, uh sura built it but i'll correct anything i've said I that's good to know um i know uh ari built one i i didn't know if this was the one he built or maybe sura built it i don't um, know i don't know there might be there might really be more cool. than one we're gonna go uh, there and get string we're gonna convert the string to emeralds and then to arrows so that's excellent. what we're gonna do on our tour today. excellent so you know this this is a site that people can i'm going to share this link before i give up the um the uh the, the screen sharing um but um if we hop back over and if i hop back over into zoom great just i have zoom and teams active right now how do i get back i really to the like chat? the dynamic map it really revolutionizes playing on minecraft yeah you know, it, it is it is something right. that Strangely, is kind of res resource intensive. I actually don't like to use it. Uh, you know, as far as what I like to do is the kind of running wild and discovering new territory. And like, if I can see the dynamic map and say, oh, uh, that this biome is that direction. It, or this, uh, you know, it's almost like having a cheat sheet. It is, it is a cheat, it's a hack. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. Um, I'm having trouble getting back to the chat. Um, could someone who's familiar with it share the link to the uh, the dynamic map in the chat? Sure. Yeah. And then I will um, 
I will give up my share to um, uh, somebody who's actually playing Minecraft to kind of show some of these places. And then um, I can talk about some of these things and maybe uh, direct you a little bit and um, answer any questions people have as we, as we move there forward. Is a, there is a good comment by Walton Burns in the chat who says, as a teacher, it seems like the map would be helpful to keep track of students though. <laughs> Maybe was that an idea, Aaron? Um, so I initially installed the map because um, I, not long after we set up the server, I asked on the Facebook group um, what plugins people were using with their students. And one teacher, I can't remember who it was, if you're here, please tell us about it. But, um, but one teacher chimed in and said that he really liked, I, th I, th I think it was a he, that he really liked um, using DynMap with his students and his students really liked it because then they could see each other's builds and they could also see where people were um, and go find each other. Um, so th that was something they liked about the community aspect of it. Um, also, one thing that I've been playing around with, and um, since I don't really have students in Minecraft, um, you know, I have, I have you guys, I have teachers in Minecraft. Um, one thing I did was I set up Padlet, which is a, um, a tool that a lot of teachers use. And I made it, I, I made a Padlet that was set up, and I think I can get to that, um, um, a, a, a Padlet where people could submit screenshots of their builds and my idea was that um, um, I've used Padlet for other things. Like for example, um, um, when, we, when we were able to meet in person with students, um, one thing we did with Padlet was um, we walked around our town of Athens, Ohio, and the students took pictures of local art with their phones and submitted it all to a Padlet where they could all um, discuss it and talk about it. Um, so I tried to do something similar. I, with, I yeah, I can. I have the Padlet on. If you, oh, okay, you're, you're 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 good. Yeah, I got to get logged in, but yeah. Um, okay. But you could share the link if you want. Oh, okay, okay. I'll share the link. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So basically, just like a place where people can upload their screenshots. Granted, we're already uploading them to Facebook. We're already uploading them to Discord. So. You know, it's like another place where people can upload. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have a reason to not be on social media. You know, maybe with your students, maybe you don't have a Facebook group with your students. Maybe you don't want to have a Facebook group with your students. So Padlet would be something kind of outside the world of social media. Uh, it looks like my Padlet's not opening or... If, I, you, if you let uh, me share your screen, I'll show them. Go for it. Go for it. Right now, uh, you're sharing because, and I can't. Oh, I, I, I don't have sharing rights. Okay, I stopped. Oh. Okay. It's this one right here. Aaron, you can. Yeah, there's my Padlet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And actually, this was just, again, I called it the Builders Guild because my thinking was if people um, could submit their builds on here, then they could. Um, we could have ratings on them and then you could win or, or gain some sort of perks on the server if you uh, if the people in the community uh like your builds uh that picture that jane is showing <laughs> is uh her son maddie raining fire down on all the adults uh in a meeting last year <laughs> um yeah so we do a lot with screenshots and sharing things they tend to do that <laughs> and you know and and you can see there's some comments on the padlet where people shared things um you can see kind of some of our more uh complex builds there things that we've done um this is the again, creative world and yeah um jane could you share that url in the chat is that yes, a possibility? I Okay, yeah. great. And I have it open. I, I put the, the settings right there for Padlet. I made it so this Padlet's completely open so um, anonymous people can make posts and things. Yeah, that first, that, that balloon was built by my little brother. <laughs> um, and um, it's, it's not only a balloon, but it's also a, a farm for creepers. Um, so you can collect um, uh, gunpowder. Um, yeah. Which emphasizes a little bit of the violence in the game is you can collect gunpowder and build TNT. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm going to stop screen sharing. Okay. Mm 
Um, so actually, Vance, uh, did you want to share um, anything? Or Don, did you want to share anything in game? Because again, my computer can't do it. <laughs> Don, uh, no, I don't think so, really. I mean, Don uh, was going to talk about the affordance of Minecraft and or for well, language. Uh, Would you like uh, to speak about that then, Don? Um, maybe I, maybe I'll just give my sort of outside perspective uh, as somebody who researches uh, language interaction. Yeah. So you can sort of well, what kind of language uh, is to be found uh, during Minecraft play. And I think you can sort of categorize it into several different types. There's uh, what you can say, self-directed talk, uh, where people just say things like, oh no, uh, it's not communication to somebody, or it's not obviously so. Uh, sometimes it's a little unclear, like uh, in gameplay the other day, Jane says, I don't have any tools. Now this is a comment, but that comment led me to then throw her out a tool. So even though it wasn't officially, it wasn't a request, it wasn't direct kind of commu uh, communication, um, I think there's a lot of narration that goes on in tutorial style videos and even some of our gameplay. And that's different. You know, you have an audience and you're talking to that audience. So I, I think there's a lot of these different kinds of things. And in terms of language learning, I think some of those styles of, of talk are more valuable than others. So I would say the self-directed talk is perhaps not so valuable um, in terms of you know, kind of noise in the noise in the system. That's that's really all I think I could I could say at this point. Okay, thank thank you. Um, and I I actually, um, actually I like to um, talk about the language triptych for gaming, and this is something I borrowed from Clil, the language triptych for uh, for in Clil, and I turn it into language for gaming, which is you know in this Minecraft. Uh, world, we have blocks and items, and kids get to learn the the names of the blocks or the names of the things that they play, they used to play. Um, like uh, like Vance had Vance had just mentioned about Finch giving a redstone uh, lesson, and he he was using re referring to, uh, he was using this thingy, this thingy, and Vance, what did he say? This thingy was. It was the a repeater, right? Yeah, so, that's right. He he just he he knew the concepts, but he's a young kid, and uh, you know he he knew how to explain what to do, but he was kind of paraphrasing a lot. And I mean, you can hear the you can listen to it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it's just I was interesting that he was he's a native speaker, so yeah. and he's living in the United States. He has a British accent, so um, yeah. you know he's. But anyway, it's just language development. Yeah. So they. So, to, yeah. so so he's actually, um, it, you know, later on he might develop the 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 way of using a repeater as a vocabulary and to introduce the um, redstone uh, how it works and this is how like language of gaming can be developed in world you in the different biomes of of Minecraft world. And also language for gaming, which is the, the way we interact with players in world. Like I just told, you know, like what Don just mentioned, I don't, I said, I don't have a an ax. Um, so this is interaction. Um, well, kids get to, kids gets to interact with people in the virtual world for EFL settings, like in tai, Taipei, Taiwan, uh, we don't speak English in like outside of the classroom. So I think virtual worlds is a perfect place for them to get to interact with players um, around the world, you know, using English as a lingua franca. And um, that, that's definitely how my son, Matty and Emmanuel, Rose's son has you know, been doing their interacting in English. Um, a kid from Taiwan and a kid from Brazil, they're using English to communicate. 
and le learn and language through gaming is all because of the language exposure in the world for language of gaming and also interacting with uh, gamers and that's the how they gain language through gaming and um, so Don was say, saying earlier like you know this is a this is a big circle where language use is in Minecraft is a smaller circle, but they're exposing to the video game, the video uh, YouTube videos and reading the books. Um, that's what helps them develop their language as well. Um, uh, yeah. I'm gonna... Mariana, Mariana, I was wondering whether you could uh, tell us how much time do you imagine your son was actually in game, like talking in English in game. Um, uh, I, I actually do not know, but a lot, I would say. Um, and it's not just talking. Uh, at first, it was just uh, chatting, right, Jane? Because uh, you chat through Minecraft, and then later, when they figure out that they could easily communicate using some kind of uh, voiceover internet app, in this case, it, at first it was uh, Skype, and then later on, discord was uh, uh, was there and it's still i think um uh, philip is older now so mm -hmm. i think for a few hours uh, maybe per day not too much while my uh, younger son he spends a lot of time uh, but he has as just jane mentioned um they have friends from uh, different parts of the world and the time zone is the problem which makes me a problem as a mother they have to go to school <laughs> yeah. and they have a friend from I don't know, um, USA, yeah. who just woke up and it's for them, it's like lunchtime or something. And uh, or, for instance, it is uh, very late in the evening. He has to go to bed and he has a friend from um, USA or uh, they want to chat. So, um, so um, well, my, that, my, my feeling is that you, you really have to have a lot of in-game talking uh, yes. to make significant gains from in-game language. I think most of the learning comes from these outside resources that Jane is referring to. The, yeah, yes. you know, the motivation comes from the game, but then you spend you know, hours and hours looking at YouTube videos, uh, maybe scouring wikis and um, you know, Minecraft fora, trying to find uh, the answers to how you do something in world. I think you have actually, uh, you have a point on that. Uh, even though a lot of vocabulary has been learned through Minecraft itself, as uh, Jane explained. Uh, but then again, um, after playing with uh, native speakers, uh, it enhanced and improved their uh, speaking abilities. Um, and of course, yeah. through outside. Uh, 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 but the, the best thing, what I loved about um, our sons, and especially the older one, is that he didn't just play and learn English. He started creating his own either worlds or servers or uh, uh, videos or tutorials. Or and, and now at, at the age of 17, even though he told me the other day that he started uh, to programming, he programs, uh, he has his own games now. Uh, so I would say there are, there are a lot of things that actually came from just Minecraft. A lot of things uh, uh, that he only learned. He didn't just learn English. He learned many other yeah. soft skills and even agree, technical, yeah. Yeah, technical stuff, which for me, we, I'm so happy that we have him now. I'm just saying, I don't know what's happening here. He just come, t -t 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 click, 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 click. That's it. I fixed it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what did you do just now? <laughs> so, yeah. It's well, not this is absolutely, absolutely my sense that that the idea of simply having Minecraft for the purpose of as a replacement for language classes somehow doesn't doesn't capture what you want. You want it, this idea of there's this full complete package and that uh, learning acquiring language is part of that complete package of of uh, computer literacy and world literacy and kind of a whole range of uh, personal development. Can but I say you something can here? do a lot of things in Minecraft. Uh, you can leave these notes in English. You, uh, you can have like a 
let's say um, in Minecraft, uh, if you are uh, very into gaming, you, students can try to figure out the trails. I was just watching a, a, a video of a colleague uh, who um, who is uh, trying to motivate her students to do more uh, online course through gaming. So if you motivate them within the game, Minecraft is itself, uh, let's say, uh, to do certain things, to, to, to seek, to search, like, like for, a, uh, for an Easter egg or something, they, they, they actually pick up the things and they learn by doing it with not, with, without even realizing. I was talking to a colleague from Japan the other day. He was saying, how do my students speak English so well? And I said, it's not only me. I, in the classroom, I'm not doing that much. I do, but I try to motivate them to expose themselves to the language, whether that is from gaming, because mostly boys do play games online, uh, or watching um, 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 subtitled uh, uh, in English or American movies, not synchronized, but just real language and this is how mainly the language should be learned in my opinion uh, of course you get other thing, uh, things methodologies mm -hmm. and language and grammar uh, from from the classes right but I've mean, uh, often well. said that my my view I whenever I, whenever I've seen the the lessons like an ESL lesson mm -hmm. prepared uh, in world to me it always seems like I always use the phrase, old wine in new bottles. It seems like 1950s methodology ways of viewing language that have simply been, if, let's say, encased in Minecraft blocks. But I mean, if you're still just teaching the verb tenses, uh, uh, you know, standard grammatical objects, then I think you kind of missed the point. And could I say if you were it doesn't here, have to be that way. It doesn't yeah, have to be I, like, I, oh, maybe I'm muted. Yes. Am I muted? Hello? I, we, can, I we can hear you, Vance. Yes, yeah, yes. okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to illustrate a few things in Minecraft. Uh, first of all, I'm practicing sustainable uh, farming. So I, I'm taking, I'm, I'm harvesting wheat. I've uh, taken carrots so I can eat, but I've also taken wheat so I can trade it with villagers. And uh, I operate sustainably here, as you can see. I just let a bunch of sheep out, and I, I think they're on the outside. And uh, yes, they are. OK, so I let those sheep out. They'll go wander in the forest. I'll make more sheep. Oh, here's a monster over here, a skeleton. He could be dangerous. OK, so let's, let's uh, watch out, Jane, skeleton in the neighborhood. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've got, I'll show you what's in my inventory. I've got a bow, but I've only got five arrows, so I need more arrows. And uh, I'm going to go through a process. The process is that I'm going to uh, visit a place where you can get string, because to make an arrow, you need string and you need a stick. Uh, arrow, sorry. You need feathers, you need flint. You need, well, anyway, okay, yeah. So... Uh, oh, oh, uh, sorry, I need string to trade it with a fisherman to get emeralds. And um, then I can trade the emeralds for arrows. And I'll show you how that works. And I can also use wheat to get emeralds as well. So I've got a lot of wheat here. I'm going to a place where there's more wheat. But first of all, I'm going to go catch up with Bobby. She's on the string farm. And by the way, you guys don't have to stop talking. Uh, just, you know, let, let me say a few words every now and then. But if you have questions, uh, you're still in the conversation. So if you, if you want to ask about anything or you want to talk about anything, that's just fine. I'm going to go over to a string farm. Maybe Jane wants to join me. I'm going to warp to... Jane, oh, sorry, warp. would you like yeah. to explain I, a little bit uh, your view of uh, Minecraft and, and language uh, to, to Donald? Oh, Myself. well, oh. I, I, I believe, well... Um, Early on, earlier, um, Aaron was asking that he uh, liked to hear more about the books. Um, and this is one of the points that Don made that um, um, because of the interest in Minecraft, um, kids get to learn more about it outside of the Minecraft as well. And take a look at these books. These, these are the, this is like a Minecraft manual that, um, Maddie has loved. As an EFL learner, these are pretty difficult for them, for him um, at the age of, say, six, 
right? Um, but he's really, because of the graphic and because he's playing in world, um, he, he's able to pick up a lot of things from reading these books. And later on, there are uh, fictions um, that created um, based on the Minecraft, uh, you know, playing Minecraft. And so these, he later on um, started to reading, read um, these, this fiction, like fiction book. And I think that's a lot of um, reading. That's how he gained his reading, um, uh, you know, comprehension and skills as well. And another thing that Tom mentioned is that um, if you're interacting, there's not enough talk in world and um, you have to be able to talk a lot or if you're having lessons in in Minecraft um, what 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 um, we have experienced in the past is that teachers are using the old ways like information gap um, in Minecraft world and so Don mentioned that these are old wine and new bottle uh, but it doesn't have to be that way you we can um, design um, sca scavenger hunts or task-based learning uh, where like this, what Vance is showing us to is to get a, a, an arrow, but it ha takes a lot of process of going through to go through um, in order to complete that task. And um, through this uh, process, they're picking up the language. If it's a collaborative work, then they're interacting with the, the players. And Camilla uh, Yamashiro, mm -hmm. would would you like to take the mic? Can I explain the while I'm here because I want to go elsewhere? Can I explain what we're doing? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, this is the string farm that Aaron was talking about that his brother built, and what there's a spawner back here, and it, the players are protected by glass, and the spiders here. When you kill spiders, they drop string, and the machine here. Bobby can kill spiders, and if you open the chest, you can see that the chest is filling up with string. So as Bobby kills spiders, there should be more string added here. Now I can take the string and I can put it in my inventory, and this is what's in the chest. As you can see, the chest is filling up now with more string. So as Bobby kills spiders, uh, we get more string, we can get more arrows. So we're going to take that over now and get some emeralds. So Bobby, have you got a lot of string? Okay, so if you give me just another minute now, I'm going to pop over to another warp, and then you guys can continue talking. Dakota is here. Oh, Dakota's in this. Oh, Dakota isn't here online with us. Okay, so we're going to warp over from the string farm where we collect string. This is all part of a process. Process Describing processes are is one aspect of language learning and one art, aspect of literacy and communication. So, oh, sorry, I have to go. I set a home yeah, for this place. You know, like there's, there's no reason that that... Uh, can't be simply written down as a kind of a handout uh, to students ahead of time. So I would, I would have the students, I would yeah. tell them, or, or yeah, there's so many ways you could do it. You yeah, can, but you, you know, can, say, just you like, can okay, write it or they can write have, it. You have to do, you have to first do this, then you have to do this, maybe a little instructions for how, how you do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, we've come up to the top of a place where there are there's a market up here. I'm not sure who built this. I don't know. Aaron, do you know who built this? Looks like Ari. Yeah, I be. think that looks like something that uh, Ari, who is my brother, uh, might have built. Uh -huh. Can I ask okay, so, how old how old Ari is? You keep saying uh, your, little, your little brother. Uh, I think he turned 40 this year. <laughs> <laughs> but he, 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 he does have a six-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay. the sun helped him. <laughs> uh, I would just like to add up that there were some cases of uh, teachers uh, using Minecraft uh, to have their students motivated in creative writing. And that was one of one of my idea uh, when mm -hmm. I created a scenario. Uh, so students were supposed to do many things, not just they should create a story, they should build in uh, into a Minecraft, or uh, or it could be vice versa. They could build something and then uh, write. Uh, uh, so it 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 has a lot of you you know project based learning, task based learning, and it's fun. But of course, we have to bear in mind, but that not all students might might be interested in gaming in general. I'm not talking about Minecraft, because I see in my classes in uh, secondary school boys, yes, and I will tell you, all the boys 
speak English, great. There are rarely some cases that do not speak, but these boys mainly do not play games. Girls, on the other cases, they play less uh, games, but they do play mobile, uh, mobile uh, um, games on mobile phones, right? Not, not like uh, boys mainly. So this is what I notice. And whenever uh, I get students who are not very good at English when they come to secondary school, because they start learning English in Croatia at the age of seven, let's say in the primary school, um, then usually through four years of um, uh, uh, secondary school, sometimes I try to motivate them to um, improve their speaking skills at least, and definitely reading skills through either this kind of intrinsic motivation for, through gaming or watching videos, um, YouTube tutorials. So it depends. It, it, I always have to figure out what works for uh, for uh, some of them because they have to um, quickly improve or enhance their knowledge of English language and to pick up with other uh, other students. So. It, it depends. No, I think really absolutely. That's, right. that's the approach. I, I think uh, that's something that just needs to be communicated with people that maybe are coming new to Minecraft as teachers, teachers that maybe have, uh, a, a, that want to follow a curriculum. And I think that's the problem. What, what Vance mentioned earlier, the idea of saying, uh, my normal class has a curriculum. We have a syllabus. Yeah. So this is what I do this week. This is what I do the second week. And so then you end up producing these kind of lesson plan style uh, experiences, which that's, that's not what you're describing. You know, what you're describing is a very much the project based. And I think the project based learning uh, fits well with Minecraft. I've just traded emeralds for string, uh, for sorry, emeralds for arrows. Now I can also trade wheat for emeralds. And this is where the sustainability aspect fits in. So I can get emeralds from this guy. And also, if I come here empty handed, I can also uh, take wheat from here. So I can, I can take his wheat if I want. And I can, as long as I replant it, it will be OK. So I don't have to go through all of that. But let me just, oh, I got an egg to a, a, a duck was walking around and dropped an Easter egg there. So when you take something from some place, uh, from a farm, you should replant it. So, but this is just to point out, this is something that uh, I can explain to you, or you could, your students could explain it to you, or your students could do this and explain it to you. But basically, if you want to get arrows, and you need arrows, if uh, you're going to, well, they're quite handy for shooting um, skeletons or shooting at you or for finding, uh, uh, shooting phantoms that are coming out of the sky. Uh, but anyway, they're hard to get too. So uh, what I've done is I've, I can go back up there and I can, I've got more emeralds now so I can get more arrows. But uh, that's just a process that I follow that uh, sometimes when, I, when I'm working with my students, they build things for me and then they explain to me what they built. So these explanation processes where you can make you could uh, make a video and you could say, okay, here's how I go and get string, get emeralds, get arrows, and then uh, cut out the process of having to make your own arrows, which is very tedious and requires a lot of resources. And, and notice here, Vance, if you go back to your inventory, mm -hmm. if you go back to your inventory and, you know, if you click on the, I, the um, like carrot, um, you know, there, there's words that, oh, yeah. that, you know, this is a way That's that right. EFL learners um, gain their mm -hmm. um, spelling because um, some, mm -hmm. sometimes um, when they need to ask um, for these items in chat, um, they need to really type them out. And I think that's one of the literacy, digital literacy skills that they gain out of playing by typing, you know, learning how to type, at least that's what M Maddie has experienced. He's Definitely. really a I really, you. really mm -hmm. fast English typer right now and even faster oh. types in Chinese. 
Uh, I can tell you, Jane, about typing. Oh my God, my younger son, he types, uh, he has uh, started secondary school and he has this uh, dactylographic, he has typing classes. And his teacher told me, where did he learn to type so fast? Because uh, all of the other kids are so slow. They, are, they have certain practices uh, and he already types and he even went on, to, on the competition, uh, um, a competition, international competition for typing. So even, even th those skills have been learned through, through games. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, language. But I would like to just add that um, Jane has shared the, the blog, M Maddie has been writing, and um, th those are actually now practicing English because he wants to like do a learning diary of what we, he had either learned or maybe the words. My son didn't do writing, they did YouTube videos. So that was some kind of a process of learning. And there they picked up another uh, uh, things, uh, how to make videos and, and uh, practice their speaking skills. So the intrinsic motivation and typing, we could go on and on. There are a lot of um, benefits. It only depends um, uh, what age. For instance, my son still play Minecraft, not so much as other games, but this is where they started. Uh, and I had a student from secondary school who also was a Minecrafter. And um, in order to motivate him to practice his English, I told him, uh, everybody, okay, they, were, they had choices. Uh, and then uh, I gave him a choice uh, to, to have a creative, uh, 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 to create a presentation or something. And, he and I motivated him, okay, okay, talk about Minecraft. What do you do? What do you create? Show me the, wor uh, the world or something. And he was so thrilled that he can do that. And he created a video of five minutes, uh, speaking in English, uh, explaining, uh, show, uh, showing what he was doing and creating. And, uh, uh, and this started him creating his own uh, uh, video tutorials later on. Mainly they were in Croatian, but he also started to do some, some in English. But until that, he didn't had any motivation of speaking English. And after I motivated him to show what he's doing in the game, he was so thrilled to show off in a way what he has built. So there are things that, uh, at least for motivation, it, it works great. And th th that's just one example. Thank you, thank you. And we have Camilla Yamashiro, who, who's been also sharing in the chat. Um, I don't know if Yamashiro would like to take the mic and share or if Walt, Walton, one of our participants in Minecraft MOOC, would like to share your thoughts. Uh, I don't know if you can can hear me actually. Yes, yes I can hear you, yes. <laughs> my, my husband's already sleeping. That's why I'm not with the camera on. <laughs> okay. It's late at night here and already. you're from Japan? Yes, I live in Japan, but I'm Brazilian actually. Okay. I <laughs> but I live in Japan for a while. And yeah, I learned English in, in Brazil, which is an EFL context. So I didn't have any chance to actually practice the language, but I always play a lot of video games. And that's the, the, the language that you use over there, right? And I have friends that I never met in person that I have over 20 years playing video games and we speak English. Some, I don't even know where they actually are, but we always speak English and I learn my vocabulary of mostly expressions or phrasal verbs. I learn everything uh, gaming because I didn't know, I, I just know the, the actual meaning of the word, the dictionary meaning of the words. And you just learn kind of some part of the English, but not the entire English. And you'd only realize that when you're actually speaking with someone else. And when you're gaming, you have to negotiate the meaning all the time. Some are native speakers, some are not, have so many different accents and you're, you have access to all of that. That shows that English is now actually the lingua franca. And gaming now is, is showing this so much. Uh, I, I would like to add that Although in some contexts, girls don't play a lot, at least in my context, they play as much as the guys. Uh, I have several groups on Discord that's only girls playing. I play oh, several wow. different games. Great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm using games to teaching pronunciation. And it's the motivation is, 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 is so true. It's the main point 
uh, I'm, I'm starting to teaching now, right? I teach private class for adults and all of them want to learn because of games or, or games directly or it's for watching games because now Twitch is a, is a trend too. And they really like to participate in streams and all of that. And when they are playing, when we, we made a session on Discord and we go to play a game, they are way more engaged and willing to try the language than in a, inside the classroom. So addressing to um, uh, Mr. Carroll that was talking about using how you're actually gonna use the, this in the, in the context of the gaming, for me is the pronunciation part. Because then for EFL context is, is where you're exposed to the authentic uh, environment to practice the language, which we don't have it outside the classroom. But the, if you create this, this possibility for the students, they are more than willing to, to try. In classroom, I try and they are shy. They're super shy about it. But as soon as they start to play, they forget that they don't know, know or not know the language. They just start to speak. You know, sometimes it's super wrong. Someone corrected. You have the recast right there, and they pick up the accent, everything. They they start not speaking at all. They end up speaking entire phrases in a native accent, and, and it's just a a wonderful tool. A wonderful. I think it works so well. I think they are totally immersed in the game that they actually do not care. They speak, they communicate like in real life. And that's the fun about it. To yes. learn without actually realizing you are learning. Right? Yes, I, I told them all the time that I trick them to learn because they don't realize that they're having a <laughs> class in English. <laughs> and if you don't, uh, if you're not in that world with them or with your your peers, you know, your, your fellow teachers, if you're not in that world, you can't really experience, you, you need to experience it in order to understand what it's like. Um, so right now I'm doing something with arrows I got. I'm, oh, I think I might've got something. <laughs> there, I'm, I'm, this is a good place to attract phantoms. Phantoms fly at you from out of the air, but it's gonna get dark uh, light in a minute and then we'll be able to see them more clearly. But that's, that's basically what I'm doing. This is, this I, I is think it's, I think it is really critical that any teacher that wants to use Minecraft, not be an expert at it, but have like to gone in and you get the feel for what Minecraft as a world is, uh, what are the basic rules of how the world works. Yeah, uh, certainly that's, that's, that's necessary. That's what we're doing with each other and we really enjoy it. And it's yeah. like any other space. You could go to Second Life and spend time there if you wanted and accomplish. I mean, the... Honestly, I can do almost nothing in Minecraft and actually don't want to learn beyond that. You know, I don't want to learn how to make portion. I don't want to do any of that stuff, but I've learned a tremendous amount about simply how it works enough mm -hmm. that I would feel comfortable uh, yes. using Minecraft as a kind of communal kind of process, sending my students off there to do it. Yeah, the more you learn about it, the, it's, it's like any other tool. The more you learn about that tool, the more you see what the affordances are. And you can then uh, use that tool to do what, what you, you want to accomplish. But if, if, if you don't experience it, if you don't get and, some of the depth, then... And, uh, in, hmm? and in the way, you do not need to teach them, actually. Do you ask, you are just trying to be a facilitator, ask them to help you. Yeah. And they are more Absolutely. willing to do that. Yeah. And when they teach you, they actually learn even more because yeah. they are well, using, you I mean, force them to use that language, right? They talk about these ideal uh, kind of inter, uh, sort of language exchange situations where you have an imbalance, uh, a symmetry in terms of language. You might have the expert language teacher and the novice in the language, but then you have you know, another asymmetry where, for example, the learner is the expert in the gaming, for example, and the teacher. And so you have this ideal situation of so sort of the flow of knowledge, the language and the gaming. Yes, perfect. This is what Maddie now does, and this is what Philip used to do when we started uh, the My Evil Minecraft. And uh, uh, 
uh, they sometimes even make fun of us, at least of me. I, I, when I started building, I would crash mainly things than build anything, build few things. And then I just uh, didn't know how to use my mouse in the beginning. They, they were making fun of me, but all in all, um, they love to be teachers in, in that way as well. So, uh, and it makes them even more motivated to learn and maybe do other things, even they, they are not still realizing that. Um, in the communication, um, sorry, in the chat, Camilla just said um, about being exposed to many different accents. And uh, we were just uh, uh, explaining that it's very good not to just be exposed to American and British accent, which we can see yeah. on TV, for instance, in my country, and I suppose the same in Brazil, for instance, or maybe in Taiwan, right? But actually, um, you are uh, students nowadays will mainly uh, in Croatia will mainly be exposed to uh, people worldwide who do, who are not native speakers and they speak Absolutely. English with their own accent. And this is yeah. sometimes why I also have my students communicate in video conferences or not just also uh, playing uh, games because they have they have to understand that there are different accents not only two diff, uh, two accents uh, in the world and this is what helps them to uh, to even uh, learn learn english even better or maybe try to compare how good they are or can they improve or, or yeah. something okay well, it is it is 12 o'clock. Uh, I wanted to just comment really quick on what uh, Vance was doing there with the phantoms, because I think one kind of interesting thing about that is that's a relatively new feature that was added to the game recently. And it it kind of punishes you for not sleeping in game. If your character goes three days without sleeping, it gets mm -hmm. attacked by these phantoms. And I feel like there there's kind of a real world lesson in there for these yes. kids that are playing video games too much. Uh, but but um, you want, we want them to attack. Well, if you're trying to harvest materials from them, then yes. Well, I, um, I don't. I don't. I just set up uh, phantom observatories, and I yeah. love. I take out the blocks of glass so they will come and nest right on top of me, and then I take photos. <laughs> I love your yeah. photos of the phantom. Yes. They're. I have. I have never tried to kill one ever. Ah. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. They're so very um, elusive. I believe we're to the end of our time, but there is, I don't think there's another group coming in after us, according to the schedule I just looked at. So um, if anyone has any final thoughts they'd like to make, um, to my students that are here, you you are not required to stick around any, any longer, but I hope you uh, gained something from this conversation. And uh, to everyone else, thank you so much for all your sharing and um, especially like the things about what you're doing with students or kind of the incidental learning and intrinsic motivation that you've seen in your own children or in your own students. Thank you very Can much. Can I ask Vince and uh, yeah, Jane yeah. and Aaron in, in the end? So guys, which mode do you actually prefer? Is it more survival or creative mode after playing so many years? I prefer survival mode and um, uh, when I'm on like, and I think with like multiplayer servers that I've been on and kind of my thinking on this one is, um, I, in my thinking survival is the game and um and so like if you can build huge beautiful castles in survival mode with resources you've gathered yourself i see that as a really big sense of accomplishment um creative mode i see more like um like the old microsoft paint that we used to use back in the 80s you know like it's it's it, they can do whatever they want and i think that's fine for um for some context and some learners but yeah like when i'm playing it's you know i whenever people ask me oh can i switch over to creative mode or something like that i'm always like wary i'm like oh why don't you try why don't you try survival mode first? You know, why don't, why don't you learn? But we even set up a, a creative world for um, for that type of experimentation and stuff I mean, like that. Creative, creative can be very nice for like uh, you know if you want to learn how to how to build something. And yeah, like redstone. Once, once once you know how to do it, then you can try to do it uh, in in survival. Now, of course, that depends entirely what you do. Like I said, I I just run, run around. You know, yeah. honestly. I have never built a house ever, not a single time in six years. I simply dig holes, make windows, and that, that's it. Sometimes I occupy temporarily a temple. You know, that's, so I mean, it just like, if for that, um, there's no real point in being in creative. Mm -hmm. so I don't, You're, so. You are our explorer in Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I guess I guess Aaron said that was kind of bad for the uh, for the server. It, 
you know, the that further out, time, you, yeah. the further out you go, the the map. Map, oh, what did I say about? Now oh, yeah, sort of overloads the server once you know because every every block you go out, it simply increases the grid. That, oh, I yes, I can show you, know. you an example about of that because I've put um, border and I, and again this is kind of going on after we finish here, but but I've put borders on our worlds to prevent that in, in, on some level and in yeah. our in our classic. Oh, I'm not sharing. I should share. Um, too many apps. Um, so I hate I hate computers. that idea. <laughs> Yeah, um, from a from a management perspective, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, there's limited hard drive space. So this Beautiful. is our classic world, and um, but if you um, zoom way out, and I'm I'm going all the way down to where I put the border of the world. Um, as it loaded this world, I can see places where. Um, we'll get to it. Where um, yeah, that's the marker I put down. And I got to give it a second to load. Okay, there we go. Um, this is kind of the edge of the world. And I even expanded it a little bit to give a little more space. So like here's some areas that haven't been scanned yet a little bit. They've partially scanned. This is right. actually, this is Maddie's Island from a few years ago. And then you wow, hit to this border. You. And so like that way it's telling the server not to generate anything more, but because of Don's explorations before I set up the border, there's still stuff out here. Um, and actually I, I, I could uh, trim it, but yeah, you can kind of see how like the edge of the border, um, you can see kind of some places where, uh, because the world is generated by the participants in the world. So it didn't exist until Don went there. And, and so like, um, yeah, like he goes on and on outside the border of the world. And, and I actually have a, I have a photo of myself. This was in Dax world. I have a, for, a photo of myself beyond the edge uh, <laughs> using, using the F5 key. You know, I got, I got to this, the corner where this was this, uh, you know, permanent barrier. And I got right up into the corner of that barrier and pressed the F5. So the view is from outside beyond the barrier and looking oh, at that myself, yeah. So Dakota's world has world borders too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's something like if, if you let your players explore like Don, like Don does, um, uh, especially if you have limited resources, yeah, it, it could eventually um, kind of fill up your hard drive space and, yeah. and that could be uh, I, I sort of explore in other ways now. I don't, don't really uh, just kind of run endlessly. It's more or less, I'm looking for new experiences. Yeah. And uh, then one thing I could do as well is I could set this world border. I could change a setting so it actually just goes to the the other side of the world. So the world becomes because this is a flat world, but you know, if the world were round, then you, you would never notice the border. You would just end up on the other side. Um, yeah, well, that's all I had. And um, I, I don't have uh, time to present very much more, but I really want to thank everybody um, who participated in this. And I, I'm, I'm, I think my students have left, but I'm glad they, they got to see this conversation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure, you can, I, can I quickly ask Aaron, what's, you said your students and they're in uh, Uzbek or Uzbekistan? They are in Uzbekistan, yes. So what's, what's the context there? What do you? What do you... They are uh, teachers participating in a uh, language, uh, in a uh, teacher training program that we are doing online uh, through OP at Ohio University. And, oh. um, and I'm uh, teaching a, a survey of technology, a five week survey of technology with them oh, excellent. and excellent and yeah. we've talked a lot about how to use a mouse and how to use a projector and stuff like that and then today i was like okay now we're going to play minecraft or <laughs> we're going to look at people uh doing minecraft so Great. yeah um all right well thanks everybody uh i will yep. uh, share this video with the appropriate people uh when it's available to me bye-bye yeah okay, okay. Bye -bye. Hey, wait 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 we, oh, have, to oh, say oh, I'm still here. <laughs> we have we have to say goodbye properly oh, okay before okay. i stop the recording no, no share, no share. Oh yeah, okay. When the share is gone. Oh yeah, to, yeah. We want to go to everyone. The, the start a webcam side. and and we'll uh, we'll take a picture. But I've got a I've got a this someone's sharing. Uh, Jane. That's Jane. Oh, she was sharing the final slide. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So now then, webcams. Anybody? Okay. Since I'm in Japan, I have to do the peace signs. <laughs> okay.
Okay, who was doing this one or something like that? No, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Yeah, so what, this one, right. the girls, I the girls do. It's something like, like this one. Yeah. I used to teach in Japan, so I can do the the double T signs. Okay. Yeah. So Bye, everybody. Maybe those two. Thanks How for about live long and prosper. Thank you for having me again. Uh, yeah, you were nice awesome. I said you had so much fun. I see this uh, January and February. I have to join soon. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.